there we are getting started with chapter 50 and we are following um Haley and Kyle's team right now we're seeing if Kyle um can find what he's looking for in time he has 15 minutes so let's find out the memory box is down in the stacks said Haley um to Kyle so he raced down to the basement the very long very wide cellar was just as he remembered it filled with tidy rows of floor-to-ceiling shelving units Kyle looked up at the closest security camera. Where to next? I hid it way over to the far side, said Haley through the ceiling speakers, on a shelf near the horrible book sorting machine. Kyle hurried up to the center aisle. Suddenly, a very heavy metal bookcase thundered in from the right side, sliding like it was on roller skates. Watch it, shouted Haley. The bookcase skidded to a screeching halt, blocking Kyle's path forward. Go left, suggested Ma Miguel. The whole team was watching and cheering him on. Kyle went left. And that another steel shelf unit shuffled in from the side. Jump back, shouted Akimi. The shelf slammed to the top two inches of the front of Kyle's feet. Kyle, you okay? Yeah. This thing is like a hedge maze in the Twi Tri Wizard Tournament, said Sierra. Huh? Harry Potter book. Book four. Goblet of Fire. Right. Need to read that one, too. Kyle, of course, realized he'd just discovered the most extreme part of this extreme challenge. Each one of the sliding floor-to-ceiling bookcases was loaded down with heavy cardboard cartons, books, or metal storage bins. They probably weighed several tons each. If Kyle was in the wrong place when the shelving unit came shooting in from the side, he'd be flattened like a pancake under that steamroller. Warning, announced an official-sounding lady in the ceiling. You have 12 minutes to complete this challenge. He kept going. Like Mr. Lemoncello had said, there was no turning back now. Unless, of course, he wanted to go home a loser. Hey, er, ha, never. Kyle jogged up an alleyway between the two walls of bookshelves. Turn left, Haley shouted. Now! The wall on Kyle's right swung open, revealing six swiveling sections, each pivoting a panel maybe 20 feet long, all skittering sideways and gliding backward with and to create new walls and reconfigured pathways. You've got like 10 more yards to go, Coach Haley. Kyle waved his, or waved his way around the randomly shuffling shelves, but as soon as he was on any kind of straight away, the walls started to rearrange themselves again. Finally, Kyle scooted down a corridor so tight he had to turn sideways to squeeze through. The wall stuttered to a stop, and the voice made another announcement. Warning, you have eight minutes to complete this challenge. I'm trapped, Kyle shouted. There's no exit. None of his teammates said anything for a really long time. Finally, Sierra's voice rang over from the overhead speakers. Put your hand on the right wall, said, as she said. What? Why? When I was little, I played a lot of maze games. If the walls are connected, all you have to do is keep one hand in contact with the other wall with one wall at all times, and eventually you'll reach the exit or return to the entrance. Do it, Coach Dakimi. It'll work, bro, said Miguel. So Kyle kept his right hand firmly planted on the right wall of the shelf, starting inching his way forward. So Kyle, or go Kyle, cheered Haley. Hug that wall, hug that wall. The pathway, uh, passageway widened. Kyle kept his hand glued to the right wall and went around all the corners through switchbacks and finally, he stepped into an opening near the book return conveyor belt. You made it, said Haley. Woohoo! The shelves streamed back into an orderly um, position. Good, said Kyle. Getting out of there should be easier than getting in. Where's that box, Haley? I put it on the shelf. Which one? That one. Warning, announced the female voice in the ceiling. You have three minutes to complete this challenge. Kyle stared up at a nearby ca camera. Um, Haley, what exactly am I looking for? A cardboard box in a drawer. Okay, there's like a million of those. I flagged it with a piece of pink tissue. Kyle raced to a shelf. Two minutes, announced the lady. This one, said Kyle. Yes, look in that steel drawer. I thought you said it was cardboard. It is, until open the lid. Not that lid, the other one. This one? No, the one under it. One minute. Hurry, Kyle. I'm hurrying. Flip it open. Kyle did as he was told. He flipped the lid on a steel drawer and final, found a battered boot box. Grab, er, every member of Kyle's team shouted the same thing. Grab it. 
And run, said Akimi. Kyle did. He tucked the boot box under his arm and ran like he had never run before. He sprinted across the basement floor. He raced up the steps, two at a time. Then he hit the rotunda. His heart was pounding against his ribs. Thirty seconds. He sped, speed skated across the marble floor. It was so slippery that he lost his balance, and he fell forward. Drop the box. It flew out of his hands, hit like hit the slick floor, and slid like a hockey puck across the threshold into community room B. A buzzer sounded. Time is up, announced the voice. Yo, shouted Miguel, you made it! And Kyle started breathing again. Chapter 51 Having made his request, all Charles could do was wait. Apparently, said Mr. Lemoncello, when he came back into the rotunda, um, your Uncle Jimmy is a very, very busy man. Reminds me of a spider I once knew, but it is a Sunday morning, and we will attempt to track him down at home. Thank you, sir. I told Uncle Jimmy to stand by, that I might need him this weekend. And now, whoosh, as an elusive as the wind in the willows, you will have time to discuss with him the next time your family gets together for Thanksgiving. Now, if you'll excuse me, it is currently 9.58 a.m., almost time to reopen those Dewey Decimal Chambers. Mr. Lemoncello opened the filing cabinet and pulled out a megaphone. Is there some room you should be ready to run? Run to? Isn't there some clue or book we need to find? Just one, said Charles, and I need my Uncle Jimmy to tell me which one it is. Will you keep looking for him, please? Of course, Mr. Lemoncello pointed to a smudge on Charles' shirt. If you'd like, I will also have Al Capone do your shirts. All Charles could do was nod and smile and wonder when Al Capone had opened a laundry. All right. We are going to read chapter 52 and 53 tomorrow. So join me then um, as we get to the end of our book. Oh my gosh, I'm so 